It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life, but all you have to do is watch their actions. Watch their actions. Watch what they're doing. Most people then wait for crisis or trauma or disease or diagnosis and they wait for loss, some tragedy to make up their mind to change. And my message is why wait? And, and you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. I think right now, the cool thing is that people are waking up. You might be using the word but, but it's not because you're dumb. You don't understand how dangerous that word is. I'm coming here today to warn you. I'm coming here today to protect you. Stop using the word but. If you're not careful, it's a part of your vocabulary. If you're not careful, it can become a part of your DNA. Why are you constantly, constantly making excuses? Do you really believe that excuses is gonna save you? Do you understand what it means that you have to get to a level that you have never been in your life? Do you really have the mental fortitude to level up? This is the time right now for you to recognize the truth about who you really are inside. All that you have to do in order to start to pursue your dreams is take small actions every day that align your life in that direction. All you have to do to kill procrastination is just start. You just go and procrastination dies. So don't wonder how you overcome procrastination. It's easy. All you do to overcome procrastination is go. Very few battles are won under ideal circumstances. So you gotta simulate and practice the unknown so that the unexpected will not derail you. Every morning when you get up, ask yourself, how can I put myself in a place where I'll be uncomfortable? See, you have to master the unknown. You gotta master your fears. You gotta master the unexpected. So when it happens, you are prepared. This is the time to recognize your potential, your truth, everything about you is beautiful recognize your purpose in this world we are all responsible we are all made to do great things you know if you start with the presumption that there's a baseline of suffering in life and that that can be uh, exaggerated by as a consequence of human failing, as a consequence of malevolence and betrayal and self-betrayal and deceit and all those things that we do to each other and ourselves that we know that aren't good, that amplifies the suffering. That's sort of the baseline against which you have to work. And, and, and it's contemplation of that often that makes people hopeless and depressed and anxious and overwhelmed and yeah. all of that, and, and, and they have the reasons. But you need something to put up against that. And what you put up against that is meaning. Meaning is actually the instinct that helps you guide yourself through that catastrophe. And most of that meaning is to be found in the adoption of responsibility. So if you think, for example, if you think about the people that you admire, yeah. well, you think about when you have a clear conscience first, because yeah. that's a good thing to aim at, which is something different than happiness, right? Um, a clear conscience is different than happiness. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. So That's you're not better. Like guilting yourself, you're not feeling bad about yourself. That's right. You feel yeah. that you've justified Clean. you've justified your existence, yeah. right? And so you're not waking up at three in the morning in a cold sweat thinking about all the terrible things that you've involved yourself in. Mm. What you, you said know? to someone that you shouldn't have said, mm -hmm. or how you acted, or mm -hmm. lied, what or opportunity deceit. you lost, or the things that you've that you've let go that you should have capitalized on, mm -hmm. and all of that. And so, if you think about the times when you're at peace with yourself with regards to how you're conducting yourself in the world it's almost always conditions under which you've adopted responsibility mm -hmm. right at least the most the most guilt i think that you can experience perhaps is the sure knowledge that you're not even taking care of yourself so that you're leaving that responsibility to other people because that's pretty pathetic 
and I, unless you're psychopathic and you know and, and you're living a parasitical life and, mm -hmm. and that that characterizes a very small minority of people and an even smaller minority think that's justifiable but most of the time you're in guilt and shame because you're not you're you're not not only are you not taking care of yourself let's say so someone else has to but you're not living up to your full potential and so there's an existential weight that goes along with that if you don't learn how to effectively not destructively because that's where most people go they get into an endless loop of self-punishment which is totally ineffective but if you don't learn to punish yourself you will never get where you want to go now that needs to pale in comparison to the amount of time that you reward yourself and you need to earn that reward if you're just lavishing yourself with emotional praise and you haven't done anything then i think that that will cheapen it will ultimately mean nothing and quite frankly i don't think you can really bamboozle yourself i don't think if you try to praise yourself for stupid sh i think some part of you knows you haven't done anything to deserve that praise but when you set a bar and you meet that or exceed that to then tell yourself hey you did it you said you were going to do it you did it and that is worthy of praise and getting good at raising yourself is incredibly important and i think that most people have a very hard time doing both most people don't know how to effectively praise themselves they don't know how to get themselves first of all to do things that are praiseworthy and then when they do they don't take the time to emotionally reward themselves meaning you actually have to feel it it can't just be intellectual You've got to actually feel that. And the same with punishment. If you say you're going to do something, even if nobody's watching, and you don't do it, then you need to emotionally punish yourself. None of you will ever know whether I actually get out of bed in 10 minutes or less or not. But I say I do all the time. But every time I miss it, even if I miss it by seconds, I just gave myself the chills. Even if I miss it by seconds, I will punish myself for that because I said I was gonna do it and I didn't do it. So the fact that nobody's watching is utterly irrelevant to me. It has everything to do with myself. Now, the reason that this is important, the reason that I think that people need to do this is because that's how you shape your behavior. So like water over time can create, create the Grand Canyon or you can take uh, a polishing rock and shape stones. You can shape your personality. You can certainly shape your identity and shape your behaviors if you learn how to reward and punish yourself. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. That is the truth of the human condition. The great paradox there is an interesting and important paradox in life that you need to be aware of. It is that if you are an intelligent person, you do everything possible to organize your life in such a way that you minimize and avoid adversity and disappointment. This is a sensible and rational thing to do. All intelligent people following the path of least resistance to achieve their goals do everything possible to minimize the number of difficulties and obstacles that they will face in their day. The day activities, disappointment is inevitable yet. In spite of our best efforts, disappointments and adversity are normal and natural, unavoidable parts of life. Benjamin Franklin said that the only things that are inevitable are death and taxes, but every bit of experience shows that disappointment is also inevitable. No matter how well you organize yourself and your activities, you will experience countless disappointments, setbacks, obstacles and adversity over the course of your life. And the higher and more challenging the goals that you set for yourself, the more disappointment and adversity you will experience. This is the paradox. It is impossible for us to evolve and grow and develop to our full potentials except to the degree to which we face adversity and learn from it. All of the great lessons of life come as the result of setbacks and temporary defeats, which we have done our utmost to avoid. Adversity therefore comes unbidden, in spite of our best efforts. And yet without it, we cannot grow into the kind of people who are capable of scaling the heights and achieving great goals. Adversity is what tests us throughout history. Great thinkers have reflected on this paradox and have concluded that adversity is the test that you must pass on the path to accomplishing anything worthwhile. Herodotus, the Greek philosopher, said, adversity has the effect of drawing out strength and qualities of a man that would have lain dormant in its absence. The very best qualities of strength, courage, character, and persistence are brought out in you when you face your greatest challenges and you respond to them positively and constructively. 
Everyone faces difficulties every step of the way. The difference between the high achiever and the low achiever is simply that the high achiever utilizes adversity and struggles for growth, while the low achiever allows difficulties and adversity to overwhelm him or her and leave him or her discouraged and dejected. Bounce back from disappointment, the work by Abraham Zelesnik at Harvard proved that the way you respond to disappointment is usually an accurate predictor of how likely you are to achieve great success. If you respond to disappointment by learning the very most from it, and then by putting it behind you and pressing forward, you are very likely to accomplish great things in the course of your life.